Hello, kamusta po ang lahat? And uh, welcome po sa live coaching nat natin sa araw na ito. And uh, today, as you are all informed, we will be discussing some details on uh, one of the subjects in the teacher's licensure examination and uh, our subject for today is TLE. Specifically, um, we will be discussing about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, basic accounting and uh, a little on uh, business mathematics. So, ihintay natin yung mga iba nating mga kasama dito sa page So currently we have 23 viewers. So uh, let's see kung sino-sino yung mga uh, shout out naman diyan sa mga comments sa lahat ng mga viewers natin para makita para ano para ma-acknowledge namin. Ayan, so good morning. Um Good day kay uh, Aku Juan. He is watching from Isabela. Please shout out sa mga viewers natin para ma-acknowledge natin kayo. So, um, after some minutes, we will be starting our discussion. Uh, may, meron din tayong uh, viewer from Tabuk, Saudi Arabia. Si... Mary Jean Tiao Sony. I'm not sure if I pronounced your name correctly. But welcome po sa ating live coaching. O meron din tayo si Karen Avanzado Rubante. He is watching from Kalbayog City, Western Samar. So magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. We also have um, Ron Simeon. He is also watching from Isabella. So parang marami tayong mga watchers dyan from Isabella. Oh, meron din tayong viewer from uh, Damam, Saudi Arabia. Si Relly de Guzman. Wow, I'm, I'm, I think uh, I'm familiar with this person. So again, uh, today we will be discussing about um, entrepreneurship, uh, basic accounting, and um, a little on business mathematics. Because I'm aware that um, these topics are uh, included in the um, TLE subject, especially to, to those who are uh, who's um, major ship is TLE, so this is uh, this is part of your examination, and um, I am very much very much privileged of um, being invited to to share with you guys my my knowledge about these topics, this subject. So. Later, I will formally introduce myself when we formally start the, the session. So for now, I just want to hear um, shout outs from our viewers.
ఎందుకు మళ్ళా హలో అగైన్ సో ఐ జస్ట్ వాంట్ టు అక్నాలెజ్ సమ్ వర్ వ్యూవర్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ జియాన్ అలాసిక్ ఇస్ వాట్ షీ ఇస్ వాచింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఓరియంటల్ మిందోరో సో వీ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ viewers from general santo city uh jinli malan labrador we also have viewers from iloilo so hi sa mga taga iloilo um i hope na okay lang kamo da and um we also have um viewers from mindanao state university main campus school of survivors si mads tetwogon lpt and we also have viewers from Maguindanao parang Maguindanao Johara Makakua Pumili So we also have ayan from Daba Davao si Jim Boy Lakita So um I think we can start now with our coaching So before we start I would like to introduce myself So I am um my name is Ross Tuding and um I am friend I am a friend of uh, teacher A and the uh, the owner of this channel and I was invited to share with you guys some of my knowledge regarding the topic which is which are entrepreneurship basic accounting and business mathematics so Currently I am working as an accountant dito sa uh, Saudi Arabia and um, I am a certified public accountant and I've just finished my um, exams for uh, certified management accountant and currently I'm working on my on my certificate I have to um, submit some papers so that i can fully utilize the um, certified management accountant title so yon a little a brief introduction of myself and um i guess we should um start now with our um discussion so first i have gone through the syllabus the the table of specifications of the subject TLE for teachers licensure examination and i have found out that um one part of the table specifications for the subject is entrepreneurship so um i have read that uh most probably six items will be included in the examination for this for this subject. So um before we start or before we define what is entrepreneurship it is basic to learn what are the forms of business enterprise. So basically we will be talking about business here. Um it's a it's a bit strange kasi nga you are educators, you are teachers and uh, maybe magtatanong kayo why are we studying about business when when our line of uh, um when 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 our line of uh, career or as educators we it's 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 a bit far from the concept of business enterprises or business but since it is discussed or it is tackled in your um examination it's it's um good that we discuss this para madagdagan yung knowledge ninyo about business and um even for your personal use maybe in the future you will um have the initiative to go on your own to establish your own business so meron na kayong ano um idea and knowledge about the business world so let's discuss first 
what are the forms of business enterprise or business organizations? So if you are planning to establish your own business, ito yung mga pwede mong pasukan. These are the forms of business enterprise. We are aware of different business business organizations, malaki man ito o maliit. Basta lahat ng mga kumikitang company or lahat ng mga kumikitang um, businesses, pwede siya i-categorize into these four forms. Una is sole proprietorship. And then we also have partnership. We have corporation and we have cooperatives. So let's go through each one by one. The first one is sole proprietorship. So what is sole proprietorship? From the word itself, soul meaning isa, one. Ibig sabihin nito, ito yung mga business organization, ito yung mga, mga negosyo na ang may-ari is isang tao lang. Ang gumawa nito, ang nagbigay ng pera para gumana ang negosyo ito is isang tao lang. So yun, from the word itself, sole, sole proprietorship. May mga advantages at disadvantages ang mga ganitong klaseng negosyo. Isa sa mga advantages nito is, isa ka lang, meaning pag kumita ang business, solo mo din yung lahat ng kita mo. Wala kang, um, wala kang kahate. So yun yung advantage nun. Ang disadvantage naman, isa sa mga disadvantage ng sole proprietorship is, pag nalugi ang company, sagot mo din ang lahat ng lugi. Wala kang kahate. At yung source ng, ng, ano mo, ng capital mo or ang pondo mo is ikaw lang din. So limited yung source of resources mo kapag sole proprietorship. Ano naman yung partnership? From the word itself, partnership, um, two or more persons pull in their resources to establish a business. Partnership, dalawa kayo or more than two. Two or more than two persons, kinumbay nila yung mga resources nila, yung pera nila, para gumawa ng negosyo. And if you have noticed dyan sa sinishare kong, ano, sinishare kong screen, um, a partnership may be a limited, limited or general partnership. So pag sinabi natin limited partnership, ito yung partnership na um, kapag nalugi or kapag nagkautang yung partnership, Ang, ang mahahabol ng mga inutangan is yung hanggang sa pera lang na binigay ng mga partners sa partnership. So kung ano yung, ano yung mga sobra doon, hindi na nila mahahabol yung mga partners. Pag sinabi namang general partnership, um, ito yung partnership na uh, kapag nalugi or yung mga utang ng partnership, pwede nilang habulin yung other um, resources ng partners aside from those which they distributed doon sa partnership. So yung general cons, binibigay ko lang sa inyo yung ano yung um, concepts ng limited and general partnership. Because um, if we talk about technical technicalities of these um, terms, siguro hahaba yung discussion natin. So I'm just giving you um, ano lang, a general concept. So let's move on to corporations. So when we say corporations naman, Ito yung ano, they are formed by incorporation or by incorporating them. Ito yung dadaan ka muna sa um, medyo pasikot-sikot na, um, na mga processes of the government for you to be able to create this type of business enterprise. So pag sinabing corporation, bumubuo ka ng isang artificial person which is separate from its owners. So ito yung usually ang mga nakikita nating mga malalaking company like um, uh, Jollibee, uh, Jollibee companies like that. And then we also have mga SM, mga Lopez Group of Companies. These are corporations. Usually, um, binubuo siya ng mga maraming tao, more than 15 persons. Tapos uh, inipon nila yung, ano nila yung pera para gumawa ng separate business entity, which is called a corporation. So we have three types of corporations. We have private, public, and government. So pag sinabing private corporation, ito yung pagmamayari ng um, certain group of people na sila-sila lang. 
Meaning, hindi nila binibenta ang ownership of that business entity sa public. Private lang. They privately own that corporation. So, for example, um, um, we have a group of people. For example, ang ano, um, mayayaman kayo na buong pamilya. Magkakapatid, magkakamag-anak. And then you form a corporation. Tapos yung pagmamayari ng corporation na yun, kayo-kayo lang na magkakamag-anak, na magkakapamilya. Hindi nyo siya binibenta sa iba pang tao. Yun ang basic concept ng private. Pag sinabi namang public corporation, ito yung mga corporation na ang shares nila or yung pagmamayari ng corporation, stocks or shares, is traded sa tinatawag natin na um, stock market. So in the Philippines, if you are familiar with the Philippine Stock Exchange, doon binibenta ang mga shares of stock ng mga corporations. So mga example nito is yung mga malalaking alam natin. Yung SM, yung San Miguel Corporations, um, ABS-CBN, GMA. Yung pagmamayari, some parts of the corporation, some ownership of the corporation is traded to the public. Pwedeng bilhin ng um, general public ang mga pagmamayari. And then last is government. So pag sinabi namang government corporations, these are um, corporations owned and controlled by the government, meaning pagmamayari siya ng gobyerno natin. So mga example nito is yung PCSO, yung ano pa ba, um, Land Bank of the Philippines, yun. So corporations siya, pero ang, ang may-mayari nun is ang government. So we also have cooperatives. So pag sinabi namang cooperatives, ito yung, yung mga tao na may certain purpose sila and pare-parehas yung goal nila, um, ipupull in nila lahat ng mga resources nila or magpupull in sila ng resources para ibigay sa kanila ang pangangailangan na yun. So mga basic example ng cooperatives are yung mga ano, water, water districts. So di ba, sa isang lugar, kailangan nila ng tubig. So ang gagawin nila, magbibigay sila ng certain amount, tapos i-gather nila yon, ipupull in nila, tapos gagawa sila ng isang business enterprise para mag-provide sa kanila ng tubig. And in the same time, habang kumikita yung, ano, yung business enterprise na yon, which is a cooperative, ang kita nun is ihahatiin din nila sa kanila. Sa kanila. So parang sa yun yung basic premise ng isang cooperative. May certain purpose sila. Okay, so I hope uh, medyo clear na tayo dun sa mga forms of business enterprise or business organization. Actually, I'm just giving you um, ano lang, uh, um, a background of, a background of uh, those terms para ma-familiarize lang natin. Now, let's move on to types of business. Ito naman yung ano, um, klase ng mga business. Kung ikaw, later, gusto mong mag-create ng, ng sarili mong business, saan ba ako pwedeng mag, ano, pumasok? Una is trading and merchandising. We also have service and we also have manufacturing. Actually, tatlo lang binigay ko, pero madami pa. Pag sinabing trading and merchandising, ito yung bibili ka, Ito yung ano, buy and sell. Basically, buy and sell. Bibili ka, tapos lalagyan mo ng, ng tubo, ibibenta mo. Trading and merchandising ang tawag doon. Pag sinabi namang service, ito yung magbibigay ka ng serbisyo. In return, babayaran ka. Mga example nito is ang mga parlor, ang mga barbershop. So, magbibigay ka ng service, babayaran ka nila in return for that service. And we also have manufacturing. Ito naman yung from raw materials, um, ipaprocess mo siya into a uh, product, tapos ibebenta mo yung product na yun. So it will undergo a certain process para ma-achieve mo yung product na yun. Tapos yung product na yun is ibebenta mo. Manufacturing naman ang tawag doon. So basically, marami, marami pa, marami pa types of businesses, pero these are the most common types of business. Now, ang tadong sa atin, why do people go into business? Or why people want to go into business? So, tatanong natin sarili natin, bakit ako, po, bakit ako gagawa or uh, why should I go into a business? Of course, we want to go into business because gusto nating 
kumita. That's a basic principle, di ba? Bakit ka naman um, gagawa ng business or bakit ka ba mag-create ng business? Kasi gusto mong kumita, di ba? Tama, yun naman yung ano, goal natin. So these are some of the rewards of going into business. Ito yung mga ano natin, mga um, benefits when we go into business. Okay. So these are the rewards of going into business. Una, Finding fulfillment. O, di ba, sometimes we go into business because ito yung passion natin. So, if when, when we do our passion, we find fulfillment in doing it. We also go into business for helping others. Because we all know that if we have a business, um, nakaka-hire tayo ng mga tao. So, natutulungan natin ng ibang tao. And then, unlimited opportunity to make money. If um, luck is on your side, and you have all the necessary tools in making your business successful, um, you can make a lot of money also. And then tapping your creativity, of course, um, it will, ano, it will uh, stimulate your creative, creative juices sa mind mo if you have a business para mapalago mo yung business. Overcoming business challenges, being your own boss, di ba kapag, kapag may business ka, Ano, um, ikaw yung boss mo, wala kang boss. So you you hold you you hold in your hands your time, your resources. And then um, building an entrepreneurial legacy. Of course, um, kapag naging successful yung ano mo, yung company mo, you will be known and even you will leave a legacy para magamit ng um, or legacy for for the future generation sa mga anak mo, sa mga apo mo. So it will be a leg legacy kapag nakagawa ka ng successful business. Speaking of rewards, we also have risk of going into businesses. Ito yung mga risk naman. Una, possibility of failure or risk taker. Of course, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon, um, pag gumawa ka ng business, uh, magiging successful agad. Even the um, well-known businessmen uh, in the world and even in the Philippines, lahat sila naka, ano, nakaranas ng failure. Kasi nga, uh, if you're just starting, kailangan mo talaga mag-take risk. So sometimes, risk may give you rewards. On the other hand, um, risk may also give you failure. So, may possibility talaga of failure. There is, there is always risk. Unpredictable business condition, long hours of work, and unwanted and unexpected responsibility. So, yun yung mga kakaharapin natin. Now, one of the basic tool in um, creating a business is what we call a uh, business plan. This will be our blueprint in um, creating our business. So kung sa mga ano pa mga basketball games, ito yung ano um, game plan ng coach. So sa business ganun din, kailangan meron kang game plan on how you will um, win and attack your business. So unang-una na kailangan in a business is capitalization requirement. Um, magkano ang pera ang kailangan mong gamitin? para sa business mo. Saan mo kukunin yung pera ang gagamitin mo? So, these are capitalization requirements. It's either uutang ka or you have certain savings na pwede mong magamit. So, these are very important. Also, strategic business location. Kailangan mong isaisip kung saan mo ilalagay ang isang business. For example, if you are um, establishing a Karinderiya, for example. So, saan bang location ang best na dapat mong ilagay sa or ilagay yung karinderiya business mo? So, uh, strategically, kailangan mo, isya, ila, mo siyang ilagay sa mga mataong lugar. For example, um, eskwelahan, di ba? Or 
an industrial area na maraming nagtatrabaho. So, dapat strategic yung location ng business mo. We also have um, register your business. Of course, we have government uh, um, requirements para mag-register para, para mag yung business mo. So, kailangan mo din i-comply yun. Your mission and vision sa business mo, so this will be your ano, anchor, this will be your guide in conducting your business. Kung ano yung mission and vision mo. You have business strategy and of course, you have to hire and train personnel. Another very important um, aspect of a business is feasibility study. So this is ano, um, a study of how um, a business is feasible kung ano ba siya, gagana ba siya or hindi. So some of the aspects of feasibility study is or are technical aspects, marketing aspect, management aspect, and financial aspects. So ito yung mga aspects ng isang business. So um, I will just go through this and then now we will... After that, after those um, knowledge about business analysis or feasibility study, we will now define what is entrepreneur and entrepreneurship. So when we say entrepreneurship, it is the process of designing, launching, and running a new business, which is often initially a small business. The people who create these businesses are called entrepreneurs. So again, when we say entrepreneurship, it is the process of designing, launching, and running a new business, which is often initially a small business. The people who create these businesses are called entrepreneurs. So when we say entrepreneurship, parang ito lang yung pag-create ng isang negosyo. Or pag negosyo entrepreneurship ang tawag doon. Basically, in layman's term, ito yung pagninegosyo. But the more ano, technical term to describe it is entrepreneurship. Ito yung uh, magpaplano ka, magkakreate ka ng isang negosyo. So kapag nagcreate ka ng isang negosyo, ang tawag sa'yo is entrepreneur. So parang napakagandang term pakinggan, di ba? Pero basically, it is an entrepreneur is someone, is a person who creates a business. So he creates opportunity um, to make his own money through a business. So yon, Entrepreneurship and entrepreneur. So baka ito yung mga itatanong sa ano, sa license examination. More on, um, this, ano lang, um, more on definition of terms. So at least alam na natin yung entrepreneurship and entrepreneur. Now, isang um, Na, uh, isang importanting tool and very important tool siya in understanding a business is accounting. Kasi ito yung sinasabing language of business. Pag, nagsalita, pag nagsabi ka ng business, maintindihan mo siya kapag alam mo yung accounting. So, when you say accounting, it is a language of business. It is defined as, a, as the art of recording, classifying, and summarizing a significant man in significant manners and in terms of money transactions and events which are in part at least of a financial character and interpreting the results thereof so kung titingnan mo talaga when we say accounting ito yung it is how we communicate in a business so kailangan nating intindihin ang accounting para maintindihan natin how a business is working. Kasi nga, ito yung language ng business. Eh. Pag hindi mo siya naintindihan, um, hindi mo din ano, lubos maintindihan kung paano gumagana isang business. Kasi nga, ba? when we say business, we are talking about money. And if we communicate about money, we have to talk about accounting. Kasi ito yung ano, this is how we communicate inside the business. Accounting. So, accounting encompasses not only the financial statements, but also other means of communicating information that relates directly or indirectly to the financial accounting process. So, financial reports include not only financial statements, but also other information such as financial highlights, 
summary of important financial figures, analysis of financial statements, and significant ratios. Also include non-financial information such as description of major products and listing of corporate officers and directors. So, dito present ko ang concept of financial reports. So, when we are doing business, malalaman natin kung kumikita or hindi ang isang business when we look at its financial reports or financial statements. Kasi ito yung magbibigay sa atin ng information ng lahat ng mga ginawa ng isang business. Kung ano yung mga um, bagay na pagmamayay ng isang business, kung magkano yung kinita in a certain point in time, kung, ma kung, kung magkano yung mga ginasto. So lahat ng yun makikita natin sa isang financial reports or isang financial statements. So I hope you are familiar with this and I hope na nakakita na kayo ng mga example ng mga financial statements. So what are the objectives of financial reporting? Una, to provide information useful in investment, credit, and similar decision. So in a business, parati tayong gumagawa ng isang decision. ba? Tama? For example, kahit na sa ano lang, kahit na sa isang maliit na tindahan lang, for example, sari-sari store. So di ba, every day, you make decisions for your business, kahit na sari-sari store lang yan. Decisions like, um, kapag naubusan ka ng, ng binibentang ano, chichirya, so you will make a decision, kailangan ko bang bumili ng panibagong supply or hindi na muna? So, it, ano, it requires decision. So ngayon, pag nakita mo na, ay sige, kailangan kong uh, bumili ng bagong stocks, another decision will be made. For example, bibilhin ko ba ang bagong stocks gamit ang pera ko or uutangin ko muna? So these are um, petty decisions that you have to make every day when you are running a business, even sa maliit lang na scale, like for example, isari sa store. So every day you have to make decisions. But in making decisions, kailangan um, may correct information ka din. Dapat may tamang information or informed decision din dapat ang gagawin mo. So, how can you be informed? Diyan papasok ang accounting. Kasi it will give you reports on the status of your business financially that will uh, help you in making decisions. So, ano pa ang objectives of financial reporting? To provide information useful in assessing cash flow prospects. So basically, uh, especially sa mga sari-sari store, um, cash is very important kasi most of your decisions will be based sa available na cash. So papasok din dyan ang financial reporting kasi malalaman mo ilan, ilang, ilang cash ba ang meron ako ngayon. Ilang cash ba ang kailangan ko sa susunod na araw? So yun, it will give you um, information on your cash. To provide information about enterprise resources, claims to those resources, and changes in them. So it will give you um, information kung ilan na yung pagmamayari mo. Pero sa pag pagmamayari mong yun, ilan dun ang ang ano ang mga claims of other people. So, malala maintindihan natin 'yan when we talk about um, the financial accounting equation. Later we will discuss. So, these are basic examples of financial reports. Isa-isahin natin. Kasi baka itanong to sa ano sa sa exam ninyo kasi ito yung mga basic principles of accounting. Eh. So we have balance sheet, income statement, statement of changes in equity, and statement of cash flow. So when we say balance sheet, ito yung report kung saan makikita mo lahat ng mga pagmamayari ng company, lahat ng mga utang ng company, and lahat ng um, and lahat ng ano, lahat ng residual amounts from sa, sa lahat ng mga pagmamayari mo. Bawas mo yung mga utang mo at saka yung residual amount. So balance sheet ang tawag mo doon. Meaning dito lahat nakikita ang utang sa mga pagmamayari 
So assets and liabilities dito mo makikita in a certain point in time. We also have income statement. Oh, basically, ang income statement dito pinapakita kung magkano yung kinita ng isang company in a certain ano, period of time. Again, na pag sinabing income statement, ito yung dito pinapakita ang kinita ng isang company. The results of the operation. Statement of changes in equity. Ito naman yung ano, um, statement na nagpapakita kung ano yung mga gumalaw sa uh, capital mo. So di ba may capital ka na nilagay sa business. So dito makikita kung ano yung mga gumalaw doon. Kung kumita ka ba or nalugi ka ba or ano... Um, Nag-withdraw ka ba ng pera galing sa company or wala? So, dyan, dyan pinapakita lahat ng mga movements. We also have statement of cash flow. From the word itself, it talks about cash. Kung magkano ang pera, I mean, cash itself, pera na pumasok at lumabas sa company mo. So, these are just basic financial reports. Sino naman yung gumagamit ng financial statements? Users of financial statements. We have suppliers and creditors, lenders, investors, customers, employees, public, government, and its agencies. Sorry. So yun, ang mga gumagamit ng uh, financial statements. Now let's move to um, accounting equation. Or so before that pala, let's, uh, this, um, let's just have a ano, drill para ano, para... Mas stimulate yung mga ano natin. So, sa mga viewers natin dyan, sa mga viewers natin dyan, uh, paki ano, paki, if you have your guess sa mga questions natin, pakibigay yung ano, mga answers ninyo. So, question number one. We are talking about entrepreneurship, ha? In the, actually, these are just ano lang, parang mga pop quiz lang siya. Kasi medyo ano, um, basic questions lang siya, which ano, very practical questions. Number one, in the entrepreneurial world, new ideas and opportunities are evolving. What is the ability to create new things, invest in new enterprises, and expand business? So... Sa mga viewers natin, pwede niyo i-comment yung ano, yung answers ninyo. Sige nga. So, we still we have viewers. So I just want to acknowledge ang mga viewers natin. Um kay Mads Titwogon, LPT. Shout out sa mga students ko diyan. Uh, sa mga students daw ni Sir. We also have from Iloilo City, si Evina Jade Alinsangaw. Iloilo. Hello sa mga taga Iloilo. We also have viewers from Sambuanga City, si Kit Kitisha Sinia. From Bicol also, we have Lad Tin. Also, Kervin Benson is watching. Sagot, uh, sige, meron tayong mga answers. We would like to acknowledge Jessa Ganaban Pamitan. So, what's our answer for number one? What is the ability to create new things, invest in new enterprise, and expand business? Okay, so, so diniscuss natin to kanina. So, the question only defines what is entrepreneurship. So, letter B is the correct answer. Okay, so yun. So, marami tayong mga tamang sagot. Letter B. Acknowledge natin si Pacres Rin, si Marivic Alimanya Armario. So, we also have Eder Love. Okay, so let's move to question number two. Alvin has transferred to a new locality. He observed that there is an opportunity for him to put up his own business since he has enough capital and very much interested to the idea. Which of these factors must, must he possess 
so that he will not rely on the service of the employees. So, again, it's uh, ano lang, practical question. So, ilagay mo yung sarili mo. When we, when we answer this type of questions, let's put ourselves sa, ano, sa shoe ng, ng, ano, ng someone who is in the question. So, let's put ourselves as Alvin in this question. So, kapag nag-transfer ka daw sa isang locality, and nakakita ka ng opportunity to put up your own business and you have also the enough money and you have the idea, alin pa daw ang factors na kailangan mong magkaroon ka para ma-establish mo yung business na yon. So, we have, so, we have answers. Okay, let's wait for some answers. It, it keeps coming. So, okay. The correct answer is letter, it's letter D, tama. So if you have the opportunity, may pera ka na, and you have the idea, ang lacking uh, quality na lang or element is yung knowledge and skills. So you have, you have to obtain that element para makabuo ka ng business. So the correct answer there is letter D. Okay, so tama. Letter D ang correct answer. Now let's move to question number three. Entrepreneurs use various management tools to succeed in a business. What management tool is used to analyze business opportunities? So ito medyo technical ang mga terms natin dito. So let's discuss one by one. Letter A, environmental scanning, B, market study, and C, market survey. The correct answer there actually is letter D, SWOT. I'm not sure if you're familiar with SWOT, but SWOT stands for, it is a business terminology, it is a business term, tool, which means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So uh, let's, familiar, let's be familiar with these terms. Ha? Pag sinabing SWOT, baka may encounter nyo later then. Pag sinabi natin SWOT, it stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. So ito yung tool na ginagamit ng most of business um, enterprises or business organizations to, ano, to identify yung mga strengths nila sa isang business, what are their weaknesses, what are their opportunities, and what are, uh, and what are the threats of the business. So SWOT analysis natin ang ta SWOT analysis ang tawag doon. So yun yung ginagamit ng mga ano business enterprises to determine their um, opportunities kasi isa yun yung O stands for opportunity. Again, uh, so let's be familiar with uh, that those terms SWOT. Okay, number 4. Which is considered as a comprehensive and effective blueprint to guide an entrepreneur in a business venture. So yun, didiscuss ko yun kanina. Pag sanabing blueprint or yung ano, um, strategy, ang tawag natin doon is business plan. It's letter C. So si Marivic, tama yung sagot ni Marivic, Alimania, or Mario. Pag sinabing blueprint ng isang business, it refers to a business plan. Okay, now let's move to um, the next question. Number five. A carefully thought, structured, formal commercial report that is extraordinary, well-documented, and clearly written to safeguard any wastage of further investment project is called... So what do we call this one? Again, I have discussed this earlier in our uh, lecture. A carefully thought, structured, formal commercial report that is extraordinary, well documented, and clearly written to safeguard any wastage of further investment project is called Tama. We call it 
um, feasibility study. So I guess most of you got it correctly. It's a feasibility study. So shout out to Lindy Bantike Roldan. She is watching from Kuwait. So we we have watchers from all around the world. So we have from the Philippines. We also have viewers from ano from the Middle East. So marami tayo ano. So let's move to question number six. So most of you got the previous question correctly. Number six, an entrepreneur might select a target market probably because the target market, so this, again, ha, pag mga ganitong tanong, it's a practical question. So pag mga practical question, you have to emerge yourself to the question para ilalagay mo yung sarili mo that you are uh, the one who is making the decision. And be practical when we answer these questions. So letter A, is attractive to the business and matches its supply capabilities. B, is large and well served with existing products. C, is fully understood by the entrepreneur. And D, has a proven track record for buying products. So basically, pag, mag, pag mga ganitong tanong, practical question siya. And kailangan natin i-select ang best answer. So, pag mga ganitong tanong, kailangan ano natin, i-apply natin yung ano, elimination. So, alin dyang mga choices ang, ano, ang hindi mo muna pipiliin kasi uh, it does not answer to the question na binigay sa atin. So, kung titingnan natin, yung um, choice letter B is a large and well-served with existing products. So, nap napakalaki na nung market. And when we say well-served, marami ng mga suppliers doon. So, kung ikaw ang businessman, papasok ka pa ba sa ganit, ganong type of uh, market na marami na doon ano, players? So, basically, hindi yung magiging choice mo, letter B. So, it's either A, C, and D. So, between A, C, and D, pipiliin natin ngayon yung best answer. So puntahan natin yung A. Is attractive to the business and matches its supply capability. So kapag ganun, attract, ang naisip mo na business is attractive doon sa situation na yun. And um, it will allow you or it will allow you to, ano, to, to access to supply capabilities. Marami kang suppliers, hindi ka mai, ma, mahihirapan. So kapag ganun ang situation, it's a very, ano, it's a very practical and um, it's a very good situation to conduct a business. So you will, your answer for this question should be letter A. Tama. So marami sa inyo ang sumagot ng letter A. And um, uh, most of you has answered letter A. So it's letter A. The correct answer there is letter A. Okay, so um, let's move to question number seven. So question number seven, ito. Let's just define SWOT. Actually, sinabi ko na to kanina. So if you were listening earlier, it will be, ano, um, it will be easy for you to answer this next question. So the acronym SWOT stands for, ano yon? Okay, let's wait for your answers. Okay, so sagot ni Jessa, D. Sagot ni Marivic, letter D. Sagot ni Chell is D. Karen, D. Sarah, D. And Edar, also D. Uh, the correct answer, obviously, is letter D. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and Threats. So as we all know, as I have mentioned earlier, yun yung mga ibig sabihin nun. Ito yung tool na ginagamit ng business para malaman nila. Ano lang siya, it's basically it's a, an analysis lang of all the strengths. Ililista mo yung lahat ng mga strength ng company mo. Tapos ililista mo din yung mga weaknesses para malaman mo kung saan part ng business ka mahina 
para magamit mo yung kahinaan na yon to be ano to be your strength or to be an opportunity ganon ang pag-analyze ng SWOT um i-determine mo yung mga weaknesses mo paano mo ma-change or magagamit yung weaknesses mo to be an opportunity or to be your strengths and ganon din what are the threats of the company at paano mo ma uh, re-revise yung threats na yon to be an opportunity of your company so strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats Tama. So most of you got the correct answer. Letter D is the correct answer. Now let's move to question number eight. Which is considered a vehicle for informing target market about the enterprise and the products or services or services? So isa din to sa mga crucial part of a business, especially kung bago ka palang na player sa isang market. Paano mo? ma-introduce ang product mo sa market kasi wala pa silang idea kasi bago ka lang. So what is the tool that you will be using or vehicle? Okay, so let's paano? What are what are your answers? Let's see when you have to inform the public or the market of of the products or services that you offer mo. Okay, so I can see uh, most of you have answered letter D. We, we also have answers uh, for C. The correct answer for number eight actually is letter D. It's promotion or others would call it advertisement. So di ba, kapag hindi pa alam ng public or ng market ang product na binibenta mo, kailangan mo siyang i-promote or i-advertise. That's why di ba, um, most of the big companies, when they introduce certain products na bago, ano, gumagasto sila ng malaki sa promotion or advertisement para malaman ng public na may ganitong product sila na binibigay or introduce so it's promotion or others would call it advertisement so you have to advertise your product to make it uh, popular and common sa mga tao okay so most of you got the correct answer it's promotion number nine which trait is an entrepreneur able to withstand the troubles that come with a starting business? So, anong, anong trait yun? Again, this is a practical question. So, di ba, pag nag-start ka ng business mo, hindi naman agad-agad nakikita yon. So, there will be stages na uh, malulugi ka, um, you will feel, ano, you will feel disappointed kasi parang hindi... Uh, nagmamaterialize yung mga plano mo, but you have to have this trait para ano, para magstand still and uh, go on with your passion, with your business. So, what do you call that trait? Okay, so let's hear your answers. Ano yung sagot nyo dyan? Okay, so the correct answer, I will give you the answer, it's perseverance. It's perseverance. So di ba, pag sinabing perseverance, pag may perseverance ka, ito yung kahit na uh, nadapa ka or natalo ka, uh, nandyan ka pa rin, gusto mo pa ding lumaban. So ang tawag natin doon is perseverance. So it's letter A. Perseverance ang tawag natin doon ha, na ano, um, kung sa Tagalog pa is ano, um, ano bang Tagalog ng perseverance? Um, yung hindi ka nagpapatalo, okay, so let's move to 
Question number 10. Which of the following is a primary cause of failure in a small business? So, sa tingin nyo, alin dyan ang mga, sa mga choices natin, mostly is the common reason bakit hindi nagiging successful ang isang business. A. Poor financial control. B. Poor location. C. Management mistakes. And D. Improper inventory control. Small business. Ha? We are talking about small business. Oh, so medyo ano tayo. Uh, magkakaiba yung mga ano natin. Yung mga choices natin dito. But most probably, pag ang small business nag-failure, it can be associated with A, poor location. So the correct answer there is letter B, poor location. Kasi small business, um, it doesn't require ano eh, um, malaking resources or um, capital. So most probably, it's the location that is uh, making the business um, fail. Okay? So it's letter B. The correct answer is letter B. Poor location. Number 11. Which of the following is the correct definition of the term entrepreneur? So again, this is uh, ano lang siya, uh, definition of term. So, kung babalikan natin yung discussion natin kanina, how did we define entrepreneur? Sabi ko kanina, in Tagalog, ito yung tao na gumawa ng business. Ito yung tao na may ano, bright idea na gusto niyang gumawa ng sarili niyang business. So, the correct answer is letter... The correct answer is letter um, letter C. Yan yung definition natin, exact definition natin na binigay kanina for an entrepreneur. It's letter C. An entrepreneur is a person who seeks to create value for local communities, people, or customer by starting new ventures which exploit new products, processes, or markets. So you just go back kanina sa ano natin na definition ng entrepreneur. Because that's the, how do we define entrepreneur? So we would like to ano, acknowledge viewer natin, si Del Borbon Manuel. I think ito yung ano, um, TLE major. I think I know this guy. TLE major yan siya. Nice watching. Okay. Let's proceed to number 12. Okay. Number 12. Mr. Silva purchase a right to operate an already established business. What type of retail ownership is this? Or is it? So may establish the business na, tapos bibilhin mo na lang siya. Or bibilhin mo yung rights to operate this type of business. So what do you call that? At actually, it is very common ngayon, ha, even sa Pilipinas. Ito yung mga nagiging ano, uso ngayon sa Pilipinas. There is an established business and then you just buy an ownership or a retail uh, rights to to operate that business also. So we, we call that number 12, it's letter it's letter B, tama. Franchise, ang tawag natin doon. Mga example nito yung Jollibee, di ba? Or yung mga um, na ba yun? mga even petrol, petron, sorry, petron, and then we have yung mga maliliit na stall, mga 
um, mga shawarma, yung shawmai master, di ba? Established business na siya. Tapos ang gagawin mo na lang is you have to purchase a right to operate that business also. So franchise ang tawag natin doon. 13. What is the benefit of business planning wherein the entrepreneur determines whether the business is profitable or not? Bakit kailangan mong i-determine why a, an enterprise or a business is profitable or not? What's your purpose? The correct answer is letter. Anong sagot niyo? It's letter C. To eliminate business risk. Okay, so tama, um, tama yung sagot ni Lindy Bantiki Roldan. It's letter C. Same with Johara Makakua Kumiling. Letter C. Number 13, it's letter C. Now let's move to number 14. What is thinking ahead of objectives, strategies, financing, production, marketing, and profit pro proposal and growth of facilities? So what do you call that? Thinking ahead. From the, if you if you would like to answer these questions, if we encounter this type of questions, ano to context clue. From the word itself, thinking ahead, you are just starting the business, hindi ka pa nag-operate, pero iniisip mo na kung ano yung mga mangyayari. So, nililista mo na, pinaplano mo kung ano yung mangyayari. So, sige, let's hear what's your answer. You are talking about strategies, uh, financing requirements, production, marketing, profit proposal, and growth facilities. Thinking ahead. Okay, the suggested answer for this one is letter, it's letter C, it's planning. So, it's called planning. When you think ahead, it's business planning. So again, ah, it's called planning, letter C. Okay, so Evina Jade Alinsangao got the correct answer. It's planning. Okay, let's move to number 15. Gary has a grocery and general merchandise store. His wife, children, and relatives help him in doing the business. What kind of business enterprise does he has? So, di ba, na-discuss natin yun kanina, the forms of business enterprise. We have corporation, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So, in this situation, in this scenario, it is Gary who owns uh, a grocery and general merchandise store. But his wife, children, and relatives help him in doing the business. So, what do you think is this kind of business enterprise? Is it a corporation? It is, is, is it a sole proprietorship? Is it a partnership or cooperative? Sorry. 
So the correct answer, actually, medio tricky sa or yeah, you might be misled by some of the details given, but practically it is a sole proprietorship. Kasi nga, it is only Gary who owns that grocery store or merchandise store. Even though tinutulungan siya by his wife, children, and relative to in doing the business. It's more on ano mga employees na lang yung ano niya yung wife, children, relatives. Pero it is Gary who solely owns the business, so it is still a sole proprietorship. So it's sole proprietorship, pa? It's letter B. Ah, hindi siya na hindi siya maituturing na partnership, kasi um. His wife and children are only there for ano for for helping him run the daily operations of the business. But it is Gary who solely owns the business. Sa kanya nang ga, siya yung may ari lang. Siya lang siya lang yung may ari ng business na yon. So he is the sole owner. So sole proprietorship ang tawag natin don. Number sixteen. A marketing mix that can have both tangible and intangible aspects and is the thing you offer to satisfy your customer wants and need is it is a it is a definition of term lang. Ano daw ang tawag mo sa when you say tangible, it has ano physical substance meaning na hahawakan mo sa that is tangible. Pag sinabi pag sinabi na mga intangible aspects hindi mo siya nahahawakan. Ang mga example ng intangible aspects are services. So, di ba? Goods and services. Pag sinabing tangible, it refers to goods. Intangible naman, it refers to services. So, what do you call this, ano, um, these elements na ino-offer mo sa mga customers mo? We call this as, ano, it's letter... It's letter A, product. So, di ba? What do you offer your customers? It's either a good or a service. So, combined, they are referred to as your product. Ano yung product na binibigay mo sa customer mo to satisfy their wants? Goods and services. Intangible and intangible. Okay, next question, 17. Acceptance of challenges and changes with open arms is one of the qualities of entrepreneur, which is, ano tawag don? Acceptance of challenges and changes with open arms is one of the qualities of entrepreneur, which is. Ano ang tawag natin don? Parang you are accepting challenges. Tawag natin doon is risk taker. It's letter B. Risk taker. Okay? It's letter B. So, tama. So, Elvina, Jade got the correct answer. Si Lindy also got the correct answer. Eda got the correct answer. It's letter B. Juhara also got the correct answer. Risk taker. Okay. Um, we'll just have a break for maybe two minutes and then we will continue and proceed.
Okay, so we are back and as a continuation of our lecture earlier, so um, we will now discuss some basics about um, accounting. So one of the basic um, principles and ideas we have to understand um, about accounting is the accounting equation. So what is the accounting equation? So ito yung pinaka-language ng, ano, ng accounting. Kailangan natin maintindihan to, kasi um, dito umi-evolve yung accounting. Pinaka-basic to ng accounting. So when you say accounting equation, it refers to this one. It's assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now, let's define each term. Ano ba yung pag sinasabi nating assets? What are liabilities and what are equity? Let's define first equity. Ano ba yung equity? When we say equity, it is the residual amount that represents the value of your interest in the business. Again, I will define it. When we say equity, it is the residual amount that represents the value of your interest in the business. So let's put it in a context na lang. Pag meron kang sari-sari store, so gumawa ka ng sari-sari store. Tapos, so di ba, um, bibili ka ng mga ibibenta mo. Magpapagawa ka ng, ng isang lugar or isang building kung saan mo siya kung saan mo i-establish yung business mo. So, di ba, um, maglalagay ka ng pera sa business mo na yon. So, um, it's either na ang pera na yon uutangin mo from a third party or someone na nagpapautang or, it's, or either manggagaling yun sa sarili mong pera. So, for example, nagtayo ka ng sari-sari store. Nagla aan ka or nag 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 nagbigay ka ng 50,000 pesos for your sari sari store pero out of that 50,000 20,000 doon is inutang mo from a lender so di ba kung titingnan mo ngayon 50,000 ang pera mo pero 20,000 doon ay um, inutang mo, meaning 30,000 lang talaga ang pagmamayari mo doon. Yun, yun, yun lang yung claim mo doon or yun lang yung interest mo sa um, business mo. 
30,000 kasi ang 20,000 utang mo yon hindi mo yon pagmamayari. So that's the concept of equity. It is the residual amount uh, that represents the value of your interest in a business. So yun na yung ano um, to put it into context, yun yun na naglagay ka ng 50,000 pero ang 50,000 na yon 20,000 doon is inutang mo. Meaning, ang pagmamayari mo lang doon sa 50,000 is 30,000. That's your equity in your business. So, ano naman yung assets? When we say asset, it is something that you own a value. It is something that you own a value. So, mga example ng assets are cash, pera, assets mo yon. Examples also are receivables. Ito yung mga Um, claims mo from your customers. So isa, isang sari-sari store, nagbenta ka, pero hindi ka pa binayaran ng cash. Meaning, receivables mo pa yon, Assets mo din yon, kasi later, it will be converted into cash. Uh, ano, pang, ano pang mga examples ng assets? Inventory. For example, sa sari-sari store, yung mga na-display mo doon na mga product, those are your inventories. So di ba? Later, they will be converted into cash pag nabenta mo na sila. So, assets din yon. So, basically, when we say assets, these are cash or these um, are assets that can be converted into cash later. This, this may be cash. These are cash or anything that can be converted into cash later. Ano pa mga examples ng assets? If you have property and properties and equipments. Kasi pwede mo din siyang ibenta to become cash or pwede mong magamit ang mga assets na yon or properties and equipment to generate cash. So, yun ang mga assets, yung mga pagmamayari mo. Something that you own a value of. What are liabilities naman? When we say liabilities, these are amount that you owe to someone. Mga utang mo, liabilities. Ma ano mga example ng liabilities? Um, loans. Pag na, sa binigay kong example kanina, di ba nang utang ka sa lender ng 20,000? Liabilities mo yon Mga utang na kailang, kailangan mong bayaran. Ano pa mga example? Sa isang sari-sari store, may, ano ka, may suki ka na supplier, tapos pinapautang ka niya. Kumukuha ka ng supply sa kanya, tapos binibenta mo. Babayaran mo later. So, those are liabilities. We call it accounts payable. So, marami pa mga examples. So, basically, yun yung concepts ng assets, liabilities, and equity. Yan yung ano, sinasabi ko kanina, example, if you're a business, ang mga components nun, and the elements that compose a business are assets, liabilities, and equity. Or, Um, another term pala for equity or capital is capital. Equity or capital. So to, to put it into a context, parang tingnan natin yung ano. Tingnan natin itong ano, itong box na ito na ipipresent ko sa inyo sa, sa screen niyo. Kung makikita nyo, Yan. Meron tayong isang malaking box dyan. Kung titingnan natin, um, sa left side ng box, it is composed of your assets. Tapos sa kabilang side naman, is yung liabilities natin. Ito, liabilities and equity. If you will notice, um, they are parallel. They are equal. So meaning, your total liabilities pala and your total equity should always equal your total assets. That is why, if you will notice accounting equation natin, assets should be equal to your liabilities from equity. Yan yung basic concepts. Assets should be equal to liabilities and equity. Dapat parehas sila parate. Okay, now let's discuss the double entry bookkeeping. 
This means that the dual effects of business transaction, meaning, pag sinabing double entry, um, let's put it in a context. Parang ano lang yan, parang coin. Sa isang business transaction, lahat ng business transaction, may dalawang side yan parate. Hindi naman, hindi naman pwede na kapag um, pag may perang dumating sa'yo, hindi yan manggagaling sa isang sources. So ang isang business transaction, dalawa ang effect niyan. Magtataas ang isang tataas ang isang ano, element, bababa yung isang element. Dual effect siya parati. For example, um, balikan natin yung equation natin, yung box na nilagay na, na diniskas ko kanita, kanina. Okay, ito yung box natin kanina. Assets, liabilities, and equity. So, di ba nagbigay ako kanina ng mga example ng, kung ano yung mga example ng assets. So, ang isang example ng assets is um, cash, pera. So, kapag naglagay ka ng pera sa isang business, di ba, assets yun. Meaning, madadagdagan ang assets mo. Tama? Ano ang effect nun sa kabilang side ng box? Kapag nagdagdag ka ng cash, for example, naglagay ka ng 10,000 sa, sa business mo. So, consider natin yun as assets. On the other side of the box, kapag nanggaling sa sarili mong pera, yung nilagay mo sa business mo, tataas din yung equity. Tama? Kasi magiging capital mo yun. So that's that explains uh, the duality of business transaction kasi may effect siya sa kabilang side ng equation sa assets on the same time may effect din siya on the other side of the equation which is equity. So yan yung basic principle ng duality of business transaction. Which will lead us to understanding kung ano yung debit and credit. Actually, pag sinabing debit and credit, these are just terms used to identify increases or decreases in an account or in an element of the financial statement. Debit and credit. A debit side entry must have a corresponding credit side entry. Each transaction affects at least two accounts. The total debits must be always equal to total credits. So, kung babalikan natin yung accounting equation natin kanina, ito yung general generalization na gagawin natin. Ang lahat ng increases ng assets is a debit lahat ng uh, increases ng liabilities and equity are credit so yon assets ang increases niya is debit while liabilities and equity increases niya are recorded as credits so yun yung basic ano principles So yun lang, yun na, doon na muna tayo para para hindi tayo ano, hindi tayo malito. Again na, basic concepts lang siya. Again, when we say assets, um, lahat ng increases sa asset is recorded as debit. So meaning ang pag pag lumiit yung asset, ang ang it will should be recorded as a credit. On the other hand naman of the equation, lahat ng increases sa liabilities and equity are recorded as credits naman. So pag nag-decrease ang liabilities and equity, they are recorded as debits naman. Baliktad siya. So ayun. 
So let's go to some ano some drills about uh, business mathematics and accounting para mas maintindihan natin kasi medyo vague siya uh, mas ma- mas maintindihan natin when we apply it to multiple choice questions. Okay. Uh, ito, medyo um, practical question. Pop quiz lang din ito. Basic, ano lang siya, basic mathematics. It's like arithmetic lang. So, sige nga, sagutan nyo ang question natin sa mga screens ninyo. Mario needs 250 cookies for a buffet. He will make oatmeal, raisin, macaroons, and chocolate chunk cookies. He wants 25% of the cookies to be oatmeal raisin and 15% of the cookies to be macaroons. How many chocolate chunk cookies must Mar- Marvin bake? Oh, sa tingin nyo, sige nga, i-calculate nyo. Ano basic, ano lang siya, basic math question, which actually might be asked also. Kasi, ano siya eh, um, math question, which is very practical, na pwede talagang lumabas sa mga exams ninyo. Sige, sa mga participants natin dyan, kindly, ano, kindly answer this question. Para, ano, para ma-stimulate yung mga ano natin. Mathematical juices natin yun sa mga, ano, brains natin. Sige, ang sa- sagutan nyo. I-compute nyo. Just analyze. Kasi kailangan niya daw 250 cookies. And you are given there some proportions of um, oatmeal raisin cookies, which is 25%. Tapos binigay din siya na 15% daw yung macaroons. Sa so, anong sagot niyo? Sige, compute niyo muna. I'll wait for your answers. Sige. Ans- Ansaran nyo muna and then I'll give you the answers after most of you have given the answers. So, we have a, an answer from Shell Resurrection Reyes. Her answer is 150. So, how do we answer questions like this? So, if we analyze, 250 daw yung kailangan niyang cookies. And we are we are given also um, parts of uh, or percentage ng una oatmeal raisin which is 25%. So let's consider 250 as the uh, base amount which will be the 100%. So, babawasan natin yon ng 25%. So, 100, bawasan natin ng 25% for the oatmeal raisin cookies. And then, babawasan ulit natin ng 15% for the macaroons. So, ilan na lang lahat ang natitira? 100 less 25% less 15%. Ilan na lang lahat yon. Diba 40%? The combined percentage of oatmeal raisin and cookies or of macaroons is 40%. 25 plus 15. Which gives us 60% of the total cookie number for the chocolate chunk cookies. So ang gagawin natin ngayon, 250 times 60%. Magkano yon? If we are going to Um, do it in our calculators. Ang gagawin mo lang is 250 times 
50%. Usually ang mga calculators natin meron yung percent ano na option. Pero pag wala, ang gagawin mo ngayon, 250 multiply mo siya by 0.6. Pindutin mo muna yung point sa ka 6. Magkano 'yon? The correct answer is letter Again, na nakafollow nyo. Kinu kinuha ko muna yung percentage ng oatmeal raisin, which is 25. Tapos kinuha ko din yung 15% na macaroons. So ang total ng dalawa is um, 40%. So ang natitira na lang na percentage for the chocolate chunk cookies is 60%. So 250 times 0.6, ilan yon? 60%. It's letter It's letter A. It's 150. 60% of the total numbers of cookies. Okay, let's proceed to question number 2. Question number two, suppliers who also who allow business to receive goods and services before paying for them are known as, so I have given this scenario earlier, na meron talagang mga, ano, mga suppliers, especially yung ano, medyo nakakreate ka na ng business relationship with those suppliers, hinayaan ka na nila na utagin mo muna yung mga goods tapos babayaran mo siya in a later period, after mo na ibenta yon. So, ang mga tawag natin doon, so you have, we have to be, you have to take note of these terms. Sige nga, sagutan nyo, anong sagot nyo dito? Number two, suppliers who allow business to receive goods and services before paying for them are known as, ang tawag natin doon sa kanila, what are your answers? Give your answers. Okay, the correct answer, tandaan nyo to ah, kasi these are just definition of terms. So, kailangan natin maging familiar sa mga terms na to. It's letter C, trade companies. Trade companies ang tawag natin sa kanila. Yung mga nagpapautang, and then babayaran mo sila on a later date. Nagpapautang sila ng mga goods and services. Uh, and then they allow you to pay it on a later date. Ito, question number three talks about basic concepts about uh, income, revenue, and expenses. Ito, basic lang siya. Find the profit of Ellis Water Refilling Business with revenue of 56 million and cost 42 million. So, when we say profit, the basic concept of profit, it is the residual amount when you deduct revenue, when you deduct your costs and expenses from your revenue. So, di ba, nagbebenta ka ng mga products mo. So, when you sell out products, it, it doesn't come without any costs or expenses, di ba? Kasi binili mo din yun at saka gumagastos ka din. So ang end product nun or ang end value nun, pag, minina, pag dinidock mo ang expenses mo and ang cost mo from your revenue, ang tawag mo dun is profit. Or yun, yun, na, yun na yung kita mo talaga. Kita mo. So in this question, pag may revenue ka daw na 56 million, tapos ang cost mo, Cost of the product is 52 million. You call it as, or how much is your profit? Sige nga, i-compute nyo. Okay, so, I guess most of you got the correct answer. 56 less 42, it is letter A, 14 million. So, you got the correct answer.
Okay. Now let's move to question number four. <clears throat> Again, these are ano, practical questions. Question number four. A shareholder sells his shares for more than he paid for. This is known as, actually, medyo ano siya, technical um, te term siya, kasi it talks about shareholders and shares. Pero kung context clue ang gagamitin natin, nagbenta ka ng, ano, ng isang bagay, tapos um, binenta mo siya more than its cost, meaning kumita ka. So, um, among the choices, alin dyan ang medyo related sa statement natin? Bumili ka, tapos binenta mo siya more than what you paid for it. So, it's a practical question. Context clue na lang ang gagamitin natin when we answer this type of question. So our, our answer there is letter A, capital gain. Uh, basic, uh, so most of you got the correct answer. Again, this is just a practical question. It's obvious naman sa mga choices natin. Okay, number five. This is a technical question again. What is working capital? Again, there's no need for us to uh, fully understand these concepts kasi it's a very technical term na siya. Um, working capital is um, computed as current assets less current liability. So the answer, I'll just give you the answer for this question. Actually, the answer for this one is letter A. Current assets, the current liabilities. Again, uh, these are technical questions na kailangan lang natin i-familiarize. When we say working capital, it's current assets, less current liabilities. Okay, I'm just um, looking through the questions and then I would like to jump to those questions which are ano, relevant ha? kasi may mga questions dito na, ano, na uh, medyo technical na ang mga term na hindi pa natin na-discuss. So I'll just move to questions which na tackle na natin and are relevant for, uh, for this ano, discussion. So let's move to this question. Para number 14 tayo ha. Which financial report measure, measures results for a period in time? So if you were listening earlier sa discussion ko, ano ang tawag natin dito? Ito yung um, report na nagpapakita sa atin ng result, meaning kung kumita ba or hindi kumita yung business natin in that particular period in time. Sige nga. Okay, let's ano, let's wait for your answers. Again, uh, na discuss ko to kanina yung mga ibig sabihin ng mga reports na to. So, aling reports, financial state financial statement ang titingnan mo para makita mo yung resulta ng operation, kung kumita ba or nalugi yung company mo for that uh, certain point in time or that period of time pala. Okay, so Karen Sorry, Lindy, her answer is B, Franklin B, uh, uh, Edar D. Okay, so the correct answer for number 14, uh, as I have discussed earlier, we refer to that statement as the income statement. So ito yung, again, ha, when we say income statement, ito yung nagpapakita ng mga results natin of operation 
for a particular period in time. Basically, dito natin makikita ang profit or ang loss ng isang company. Income statement ang tawag natin doon. Okay, ito. Next question, 15. Again, this is a practical question. And it is a definition of terms lang. We have to be uh, familiar with these terms. Okay. Ito, number 15. The point at which the level of sales of a business exactly equals its cost is known as Actually, even if you don't have ano, enough knowledge of accounting and business terms, ano lang, by using ano, common uh, a clue, context clue sa questions, masasagutan natin to. Ito daw yung point wherein ang binenta mo, um, ang sales mo, is equal lang dun sa cost. Kung titignan mo, wala kang, ano, wala kang lugi, wala ka ding kita. Sa so, anong tawag dun? A, break-even point, B, insolvency point, C, startup stage, and D, profit point. Sige, let's... Sige nga, let's hear your answers for this question, number 15. So, Franklin answered A. Lindy answered D. Tit answered A. So, the correct answer for this question is letter A. So, ano lang, very practical answer lang, di ba? Break even, from the word is a break even ka lang, wala kang lugi, wala ka ding kita. Ang sales mo is equal to your cost. So break even ka lang. Ito. Again, this is um, a question similar to our two previous questions already. Number 16. The earning power of the business firm is reported on the... So it's just structured differently. A question, basically the same with the pre previous questions, but it's just structured differently. So, saan daw makikita ang earning power or ang earnings or ang losses ng isang company? Anong report ang titingnan natin? <coughs> Alin dyan? Number 16. So the correct answer for this question, number 16, it's the same. It's letter B, income statement. Again, ha, kasi we are talking about earnings, yung income ng company. It is reported in the income statement. That's letter B, income statement. Again, ha, I would just to clarify, I just want to clarify lang that statement of cash flow, ito yung statement na nagpapakita ng ano, ng mga inflows and outflows of our, of our cash. Specific siya sa cash mismo. Ito yung mga pumapasok na pera at mga lumalabas na pera. So it doesn't necessarily show or reflect the amount of earnings that you have for your business. Again na medyo... Baka nalilito tayo sa statement of cash flow and income statement. Pag sinabing statement of cash flow, it specifically talks about the inflow and outflow of your cash, of your pera. It doesn't necessarily show the earnings of your company or magkano yung kinita ng company. So income statement talaga ang titingnan natin. When we want to check, the ano the earnings and losses of a company now let's move to question number 17 now we will learn 
about uh, no um, current assets and current liabilities. So question number 17, which of these terms, these terms best applies to current assets? So medyo new term siya. I'll just give you some um, brief explanation. What, what do we consider current assets? So ang assets pala and even liabilities can be categorized into two, current and non-current. Pag sinabi natin current assets, Ito yung mga assets, which is cash, or these are assets which can be converted into cash within 12 months after uh, the balance sheet date. Pag sinabi nating balance sheet date, usually it refers to the end of the year, December 31. So kung ano yung mga assets natin na nakikita natin na in the near future, mako-convert natin into cash, mako-consider natin yun as current assets. Ano mga example nito? Inventory is an example of a current asset. Kasi nga, di ba, hindi siya cash. Tama? Pero nakikita natin na sa susunod na mga pan panahon, in the current or in the near future, sa susunod na mga araw, sa susunod na mga buwan, maibibenta natin siya at magi mako-convert siya into cash. Tama? So, we refer to this type of assets as current assets. Again, na, pag sinabi natin current assets, it's either cash or pera or yung mga assets na nakikita natin in the near future na mako-convert siya into cash. Ano pa ang mga example ng current assets? Accounts receivable. Ito yung mga, ano natin, mga... Um, collectibles from our customers. So kung nagpa-utang ka, so di ba pag nagpa-utang ka, tinitingnan mo siya as ay sa susunod na araw, mako-collect ko siya. So meaning ang utang, mako-convert ko siya into cash. So di ba, within the next months, within the next days, yung utang na yon, yung mga claims mo against your customers, mako-convert siya into cash. So tawag mo doon, current assets kasi in the near future or within 12 months um uh, mako-collect mo siya. So ano naman yung mga example ng non-current assets kasi kung may current assets, meron ding non-current assets. When we say non-current assets, ito yung mga assets naman na hindi mo siya mako-convert into cash in the near future or gagamitin mo siya for a long term for a long period of time. Ano mga example nito? Um, best examples nito is yung mga equipments or yung mga uh, properties na ginagamit mo sa business operation mo. For example, building. So kung may business ka tapos gumagamit ka ng building, di ba hindi mo naman siya automatically mako-convert into cash? Pero tinitingnan mo siya ang asset na yun na gagamitin mo for a very long period of time. Kasi nga, di ba, pag may building ka, in-estimate mo na gagamitin mo siya within 5 years or within 10 years. So, long term ang purpose ng asset na yun. So, we refer to those assets as non-current assets. So, ganun din sa liabilities. May mga liabilities tayo na tinitingnan natin siya mababayaran natin siya in the near future. For, so within 12 months, as of today, babayaran natin siya ang mga utang na yon. So we refer to those liabilities as current liabilities. Ang mga example naman nun is yung accounts payable. Ito yung mga bayarin natin na, for example, umutang tayo sa isang supplier ng goods or ng inventory. So usually, babayaran, na, babayaran natin yun within the next days or within the next months, tama? So accounts payable are example of current liabilities kasi babayaran natin siya in the very near future. Pero meron naman tayong mga utang na babayaran natin ano, um, in the next next years or within, um, hindi, siya, ano, hindi, siya, ba, hindi natin siya babayaran um, on an earliest date. 
So, titingnan natin, tinitingnan natin siya as babayaran natin ang utang na to sa mga susunod pa na taon, not within 12 months. Ano ang mga example nito? Um, example nito is yung mga utang natin sa bangko. Kapag usually kasi pag nag-utang tayo sa bangko, ano yan, mahahaba ang terms nun. Usually, within 3 years, within 5 years, babayaran natin ang utang na yun. So, long term ang ano ang utang na yon so we usually refer to those payables as non current payables so yun yung concept ng current asset current liabilities non current assets and non current liabilities so applying those concepts sa question natin dito sa number 17 alin daw diyan ang best example ng current assets so the correct answer there is accounts receivable Accounts receivable ang answer natin dyan sa number 17. Okay? Kasi pag sinabing accounts receivable, ito yung nanggagaling sa mga ano, sa nagpautang tayo sa mga suppliers natin. And we expect that, uh, ano sorry, nagpapautang tayo sa mga customers natin. And we expect that those customers will pay us in the, ano, in, in the near future or Uh, on the next days or in the next month, so very current siya. So, accounts receivable. So, are we still following? Okay, let's move to number 19. Kasi na-discuss na din naman natin yung concept of current assets and current liabilities. Let's, ano, let's find naman ano yung example ng current liability. Okay, sige nga, sagutan nyo yung number 19. Sa so, mga examples natin dyan, alin dyan sa tingin nyo ang current na liability? Number 19. Sige. Let's see your answers. Okay. So Franklin answered C. Lindy also answered C. Edar also. Ang answer ni Edar for question number 19 is C. Okay, so the correct answer for this one is letter C, salaries payable. Pag sinabing salaries payable, ito yung mga um, babayarin natin sa mga empleyado natin. So kung titinan natin, very current siya, di ba? Kasi every month, kailangan natin magbayad ng mga empleyado natin. That's that what makes it a current liability kasi very near future na nakikita mo na babayaran mo siya. So every month, nagbabayad ka talaga ng salaries. If you will check other choices, bonds and loans and mortgages, these are actually long-term liabilities. Mga babayaran mo yan, ano, more than after one year, bonds, loans, and mortgages. These are usually dues natin from the banks. Okay. Last question natin, number 21. Okay? Please read the question and then give your answer. It's analyzing ano, um, revenue, sales, and cost using percentages. Ano, medyo ano siya, medyo mathematical ang tanong natin. Okay? I will let you compute for the answer. And then I will give you later ko yung tamang sagot. And then we will analyze the question.
Okay, shout out sa mga listener, sa mga viewers natin diyan. Okay, so I think most of you have already computed. So it's very mathematic, it's a very mathematical question. Tinatanong sa atin kung ilang percentage daw ng cost based sa ating total sales. So kung i-analyze natin, let's put it this way. Ang sales natin, yan yung magiging 100% natin, tama? So kukunin natin ngayon kung ilang percentage yung costs based sa sales natin. So mathematically, you will compute it by dividing your cost over sales. So it's, it's, this is how you do it in your calculator. 2,900 divided by 11,600. So your answer would be 25%. Tama. It's letter B. 25%. Okay. So it's a basic mathematical question. Okay. So we are down to our... Ano na, last question for this session. Number 22. A customer places a special order through 480 furniture store. The list price in the manufacturer's catalog is 1,600. 480 furnitures receives a 35% trade discount. What is the net price for the furniture order? So this is a mathematical and medyo technical din yung mga terms na ginagamit sa atin. So let's focus on the question. What is the net price for the furniture order? Pag sinabi nating net price, ito yung total amount na kailangan nating bayaran. So kung i-analyze natin yung questions, binigyan, binigay sa atin dyan yung list price. Meaning, yan yung original price. So di ba bibili tayo ng furniture? Binigay sa atin ng list price, meaning that is the original price before the discount na ibibigay sa atin. So hahanapin natin ngayon kung magkano yung net price or yung exact amount na babayaran, na babayaran natin for the furniture. Ito yung original price less the discount. So sige nga, answeran nyo. Compute for the, for the answer. Again, ha, this is how we analyze the question. Yung list price or yung original price, ibabawas lang natin yung discount na binigay sa atin para makuha natin yung net price. Because net price basically means ito yung kailangan nating bayaran or yung list price less the discount. So ano yung sagot natin dyan? Sige, I'll wait for your quest for your answers. For number 22. For the meantime, this will be our last question. And um, Okay, what's our answer? I'll wait for your answers. Okay, so first, let's determine kung magkano yung discount. So, given 
that the discount is 35%. So our list price is 1,600. So kung ang discount is 35%, so magkano yun? 0.35. Our discount is 560. Tama? So kung ang original price is 1,600, And binigyan tayo ng discount na 560, 16 less 560, magkano na lang yung babayaran natin? Okay? So, most of you answered letter D, which is actually the correct answer. The correct answer is letter D, 1040. That is the net price of the furniture order. Yan yung babayaran natin. So, ayun. So, for now, yan na muna yung last, ano natin, last, last drill natin. And um, I would like to thank everyone ano, who has tuned in for this uh, coaching. Um, I hope na may, may mga natutunan kayo kahit konti. Um, and I would like to thank everyone na uh, nagstay sa discussion natin for the whole time. And um, I hope in the future, ma makita-kita ulit tayo dito. Maka-share pa din ako ng mga um, uh, knowledge ko about certain topics. And uh, uh, I hope na ma-achieve nyo yung mga goals nyo. And I pray that uh, your dreams come true. And um, just a ano lang... Um, An information for everyone that tonight at 8 p.m. you will have a coaching for ano, general education with Teacher A. So maraming maraming salamat po for sharing your time and for listening. And um, have a good day and I hope na tuloy-tuloy tayo sa pag-achieve ng mga dreams natin. Maraming salamat.